So I need to go ahead here and install my bowl and then get my diaphragm started on there. Plunger and I like to go ahead while I so I don't forget later on I'm gonna go ahead and get my rubber boot on there. Make sense? Yep. Okay this is a good point here. Listen to me. I'm doing all kinds of yapping, all kinds of teaching some people call it. I don't know about you guys. Uh, but I know that I can get into trouble by not having stopping points. You with me? Mm -hmm. And so what I'm going to do right now is since I'm getting ready to close a part of the carburetor, what you want to do, I'm going to just do a kind of a quick inventory check to make sure there's nothing I didn't forget in here. Right now is a good time for me just to do a double check. Here's another thing to think about where we get into trouble or where we go wrong is brackets on the motorcycle. You're, you dirt bike guys, you remember how many clamps you had for doing hoses? Remember that? And where, where do we figure out, you know, does the clamp go here? Does it go here, here? I have to use what to determine that? Parts fish. The parts fish. I want to take the carburetor in the right direction and I want to figure out, okay, Honda or Suzuki, Harley, whatever, had a clamp over here. I want to put that in the right spot. Contact with a clamp or a hose that shouldn't be there, I'm going to have a problem. So it's important that we're diligent on following that microfish and putting stuff in the right way. On this one here, we've got nothing to worry about. So we're going to go ahead, and as soon as I can, I like to get this bowl bolt, uh, bolted together. Why? So nothing can get into it. And now what we're going to do is we get to do two tests. Okay, now we're doing a wet bench test. Okay, before we were just getting the float needle wet. And what we're looking for, if that float needle was sticking, we would actually have fuel pouring out of here, out of the emulsion tube. Make sense? Yep. Okay, the other thing that I'm looking for right now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look at the bowl of the carburetor all the way around it and make sure that the seal on the carburetor bowl is doing its job. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, look at me. Back the camera up a second. You guys are going to think I'm crazy. Okay, now here's something I like to do too. This carburetor in the manifold, okay, when this carburetor is on the, on the motorcycle, it actually, on its kickstand, sits like this. Does that make sense? Because the carburetor is on the right side of the motorcycle. So here's what I like to do, is I like to take with my fuel hooked up, bench testing here, and go ahead and tip it sideways. Look for a leak. If I have any leaks anywhere around here, now's my time to catch it. If I only check it like this and the fuel level never gets above the gasket, am I going to be able to check it? Nope. nope. So then you take this like so and you're going to take from this position and I'm going to do what I call a kickstand test. Okay? But let's do a crash test. <laughs> it should leak. You see how it leaked out? Yep. Okay? It should leak. We're going to do one final test. You are going to focus in on our accelerator pump. Now we have actual fuel in there. Brap, brap, brap. You see how it took a couple of times? Yep. Yeah. So that was the priming. And you'd want to do that on the bike so that the customer doesn't... Obviously, we're going to test any bike on the on the bench and take it for a test drive. See how much hits that plate? Mm -hmm. when you and, and do you notice how even when I do just a little bit of throttle, I get a little puke of fuel? Yep. Mm -hmm. You know? And then you got your... Okay. That is how you properly test a carburetor for leaks and integrity and all that other good jazz.